What is up, you sexy, sexy motherfuckers? This is Bass Jalaren, getting over a fucking cold, so that's why I sound a little different today. But we finally have a video that is a haul video in the fucking longest February of my entire life. I've been incredibly busy. I haven't been able to do tag videos. I haven't been able to do anything. I haven't been able to participate in readathons. It's all commission work and personal projects that I've been dedicating a lot of my time to. That's why you have heard nothing from me, but I am here today to bring you a video because I've decided to take you on my journey today. And my journey today is... We are going to be cleaning out my manga collection using the patented and also very controversial, if if you like being mad at things, KonMari method, which is to let go of objects that no longer cause you joy, going through the things you own by category, and then taking the things that you no longer feel spark joy and thanking them and then setting them free. That is probably like a very um, simplified like description of the KonMari method. I'm pretty sure I'm missing a whole lot of little details, but that's what we're going to be going on. And I, I can't, I, also I cannot promise that at the end of all this, my manga collection is going to be very small and very clean. It's probably going to be just as fucking large, because a lot of this shit does spark joy in me. But I am going to go through this collection, and I am going to pick out the things that do not. And I'm going to take you on that journey with me today. You're going to be my support. You're going to be my my support system in this very interesting journey I'm about to take today. But also, um, just in case, a, a couple of people showed interest in potentially purchasing items off of me that I do wind up deciding to, um, let go of. So, I'm going to show you things that I have already taken out of my collection prior to this video that I haven't donated yet for simply that purpose of those people who are interested in things that I own. So first, let me just show you those before we get in to the cleaning. We are on my floor with all the shit that I've gathered onto the floor to show you what I've gotten rid of. So this was actually a double that I've had for a while. So yeah, I'm getting rid of that because it's a fucking double and I don't know why I still have it around, but there it is. Uh, I got mail, volume one, because mail is just too expensive for me to pursue. It, it, it's a, it's a, it, it's a more of a cause of stress than anything like, oh, I gotta get mail volumes two and three, because it's fucking expensive, so I'm not gonna put myself through that anymore. I got, um, Kigurumi Guardians, volumes one through three, mostly because I have no fucking idea if or when this is even going to come off hiatus. It's 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 a it's an okay kind of like shoujo magical girl pseudo kind of thing going on. It's nice, but again, it feels like something that's not gonna get finished for a while. And if it ever does get finished, I can rebuy this. But in the end, it's not something that I feel like holding on to. We have Polar Bear in Love, volumes one through three. I've kind of lost the passion for the series. It's very, very cute. Don't get me wrong. It's cute as fucking balls, but I've just lost the drive to collect it. So there's that. And this thing over here, which you've already seen, is The Prince in His Dark Days, Volumes 1 through 4. This is a complete series. It was. It's kind of... Uh, the, the story's okay. It's kind of a mediocre uh, gender-bender shoujo story. It's nothing to write home about, but it's it's cool. It's fine. Another complete series that I'm unhauling, and I am very impressed that I'm able to fit it in one fucking hand, is um, Othello, Volumes 1 through 7. This is a story about a girl who has a multiple personality, who does justice for her. Um, it's okay, but I think I mostly got it because I saw it at Second and Charles one day. It's like, oh, that's the whole series, and I kind of got it. Which I really should not do ever is if I see a whole series at Second and Charles and I buy it just for the sake of the fact that it's complete. Don't do that. Don't don't follow my example. But if you want a fellow, here it be. 
Also got Welcome to Wakaba So, Volumes 1 and 2. This is a two-volume rom-com series. It's okay. Obviously, I clearly am getting rid of things that are just kind of meh to me on that scale. Um... Um, I also have dr Legal Drug, which is the Dark Horse Omnibus, as well as Drug and Drop Volumes 1 and 2 to go along with it. And this one I'm getting rid of because I can't justify how expensive it is to collect with how cute it is. And I, I love me some cute things, but I cannot justify continuing to collect this because it is expensive well beyond as as it should be. And that's um Kiniro Mosaic and I have volumes one through six here. And then I have a couple of single volumes. I have Tony Takazaki's Neon Genesis Evangelion. This is just a humorous take on Evangelion. I have a Reindeer Boy, which is more of a graphic novel than a manga, but I've kept it in my manga because it sort of fit the same kind of format. It's it's a cute romance story about a girl who falls in love with um, one of Santa's reindeer. It, it sounds like a really weird premise, but yeah, that's that's it. Now I have a couple of... I, I know... Uh, I'm getting... I'm, I'm hauling a couple of yaoi books because... Sometimes I just, nope. Sometimes I just can't. And first one I'm getting rid of is Jackass, which is a single volume. And also Apple and Honey, which I know was part, they, something that I got out of a Right Stuff grab bag that I hear is kind of out of print. But uh, don't hold on to things just because they're out of print, folks. Don't love yourself. And the last thing I'm getting rid of is... R.I.P. in oh, Requiem in Phony Brain, which is a single um, volume. It's just, meh. It's just a very overwhelming feeling of meh about this one. Yeah, that's the stuff I've already got rid of. This is the stuff that I've already taken out of my collection prior to this video. And now we're going to dive deep into getting rid of things that do not bring joy. So let's get on with that. I'm pretty sure I only read this once. I don't think it's something that I'm ever going to go back to and read with a fondness. It's cool if you like Assassin's Creed, but other than that it's kind of a watered-down version of Assassin's Creed. One about pirates. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not as big of a fan of Assassin's Creed as I should be, considering I am very willing to let these go. This one was pretty okay. I liked it a, a little bit, but it, like I said, it's something that I read once and like never really felt like returning to. It's a decent story, but it's definitely a one time you sort of read for me, so get rid of that. So this is the Embalmer, which is volumes 1 through 4, which is incomplete, but it's all Tokyopop ever released. Um, I don't think I ever actually ever finished this series, but I've kind of left it unfinished, like a TBR, eternal TBR on my shelf, so. Um, I, and I don't feel, I never really felt the drive to like, I gotta read, I gotta finish reading this, this is so great. It's just short stories about this guy who is an Embalmer. And they're really nice stories. Mitsukazu Mihara weaves a very fine tale, but it's not something that gripped me enough to where I feel like I need to hold on to it forever, you know? Fairy Tale Battle Royale. I mean, it gave off some really nice Madoka vibes, but. Eh. I, I, I can go my entire life without having finished this, so. Yeah. Also, sorry if I have, like, no, like, deep and meaningful words of parting for these books. Um, when I'm sick and I can't fathom the energy to even sound enthusiastic, but also... But it, it's best to have as little uh, connection to these things before I let them go. Before I thank them and send them out into the world. So, yeah, sorry about sounding as dreary 
as I possibly can about getting rid of some of this stuff. Ibitsu's an okay horror manga, but it wasn't holy shit gripping as sh- gis- <laughs> gripping as hell horror story. It was okay. So I read it, I enjoyed it, and I don't think I'm ever going to return to it. So, yeah. I know, I know I just got this. I know I said I was going to buy volume two, but the more I dwell on it, the more it's like, I really wanted to get this because I thought it was going to be something different instead of like, oh, it's this girl and she's supposed to marry this demon guy. And now she's got to work at this bed and breakfast, you know, this love triangle. I, I thought it was going to be more of a slice of life. And, I mean, I'm already going into this with some bad feels. I'd rather not continue to get the series with the bad feels. So, yeah, that's Kakarillo, Bed and Breakfast of Spirits, Volume 1, the shoujo that I didn't know was going to be a shoujo. Now, this is an interesting case, because this is kind of a Yuri, sort of, vaguely a Yuri, but I don't normally let go of Yuri. I've got this very strong, like, I need to hold on to the Yuri, because girls and love and stuff, but there is a really mean-spirited rape scene in the middle of this, and it has bothered me ever since, and I can't justify holding on to it anymore because I did not like that scene at all, so goodbye, Kanazi- Kanazuki no Miko. Goodbye. Volumes 1 and 2. That's complete. Manokuro Kinder Book. More like meh. Meh. Meh no Kuro Kinder Book. I am a fucking... Comedy genius! Blech. Don't get me wrong, Nanane was cute as fucking balls. I think I got like a slight case of diabetes from this motherfucker. But, um, it's definitely one of, the, one of those one and done kind of reads. I don't see myself going back to this with any kind of fondness. So, yeah, going to unhaul this baby. Look at that pile. It was a very structurally unsound pile. What can I say? I was excited to get Portis. I read Portis. I I finished Portis. And now I'm done with Portis. Uh, it's the continued adventures of Base Can't Find Any Good Shoujo That She'll Like Other Than Anonymous Noise. Uh, I, I don't even think I fucking finished this one. I don't... I don't think I ever read the whole thing through. We got Mermaid Saga, volumes 1 through 3, missing 4. Um, this is a fine read. Some of them are short stories. It's sort of like an overarching story, interlocked inside. But I, I think I just kind of got this one on impulse when I got it. And as much as I've enjoyed the story so far, um, I'm perfectly content in letting it go. I pretty much just got this one for a video. I mean, I know the translation is superior and the paper's really nice, but I'm I'm totally okay with just the regular paperback version and I don't plan on continuing to collect the Eternal Edition. So if you want a nice introduction to the Eternal Edition, here's volume one in all of its nice big ass glory. So this one's taken some a, a lot of meditation and a lot of thought. This is Trigun Volumes 1 and 2 in the Barnes & Noble hardcover edition. Now, I got this mostly because, oh, it's the Barnes & Noble hardcover edition. It's collectible, but I have Trigun. I mean, I know it's in a big, fat omnibus, but I'm totally 100% absolutely okay with big fat omnibuses. I've made that clear hundreds and thousands of times. And as much as cool as it is to own the Barnes & Noble hardcover edition of Trigon Volumes 1 and 2, these are a piece of history, but I mean, I already have the story. It just feels redundant having it over again, and I feel like these would have a better home with somebody who's more of a collector than me, somebody who is more of sort of a hunter of rare items than me. So, yeah, I feel like somebody, someone else out there could probably give these a much better home than me, who just kind of threw them on her shelf and left them to collect dust. I feel like somebody else could give these a lot more love than I could ever. Beasts of Abigail was cute. 
and I enjoyed reading it, but I don't see myself returning to it with any amount of fondness. So this is the whole series, Volumes 1 through 4, of Beasts of Abigail. Hey, quick tip. Don't hold on to something that you felt was kind of mediocre just because of the fact that it was printed upside down. Meaningless. Hey, I love me some Dragon's Crown, but if I want to look at pretty pictures of Amazon, I could just go on the internet. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's Dragon's Crown Volumes 1 and 2, it is complete. Evergreen. Not exactly an evergreen piece in my collection. <laughs> it's Volumes 1 through 4, that's complete. Ghost Diary, Volumes 1 through 3, which is complete, has some amazing illustrations. But it's definitely, for me, one of those things where you finish it, and then it's done, and I'm dropping it all over the floor because my fingers are stupid. Uh, yeah, there's that. Scumbag loser. Big ol' fat all-in-one. It's, it's served me well, but I've gotten my fill of it, that's for sure. Not adding this to the pile, but I felt like giving it, you know, a little, um, screen time because, you, you know, it's a little, it's a little poignant to what's going on here in this video. But, yeah, if definitely, if you got a huge fucking collection and you don't know what the fuck to do with it, like me, there's, there's a manga for you. <laughs> if you don't feel like reading a book or watching a Netflix show, there's a manga. It's nice. Here you go. Take a look. Take a gander. Go find it. Embrace it. Marie Kondo isn't here to yeet all of your items that you care about. That's not the point. Kind of a big one for me, even though I'm dark magical girl trash. I am going to unhaul um, Magical Girl Raising Project The Light Novels, Volumes 1 through 3, as well as the manga, Volumes 1 and 2, which is complete. Um, each time a new one of these comes out, and I feel like, oh, I need to get the next one, I need to get the next one, my drive to get the series lessons and lessons, and I feel like it's a good series, it served me well, but it's not something that I can put a lot of my passions into anymore. So yeah, if you like Dark Magical Girl shit, this is a nice little bundle, I guess. Also, I, it's pretty much like almost like maybe halfway, maybe even more through this video, and I'm just, let's just ignore the fact that my, my carpet looks like bullshit, okay? Because I just, just keep that between us, let's not mention it down in the comments, I know it looks like shit. I'm getting rid of the smut, damn it. I'm getting rid of the smut. Now, don't get me wrong, I love me some Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. It's definitely up there, one of my favorites, but... Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid Kana's Daily Life does not spark as much joy, one could say, so... Goodbye. I love you, my precious daughter. I'm getting rid of another. Don't think I'm gonna read this book. Another time. <laughs> Toyo Game is a fine school mystery horror thriller manga, kind of like another that once you kind of finish it, the sort of impact of the whole solution to the mystery sort of starts to wane. And so, yeah, I feel like this could use another home of somebody who's never read it before, who's okay with a little bit of mild gore. Slumbering Beauty is a cute little two-volume series from the author of Bunny Drop that, if you like shorter series, it's definitely something to look into, you know. Might as well. You Be Sucking Milk Tea, another series that you'd think I'd be just absolutely 100% down for chucking, is actually, I hate it so much, it cycles back into love. I, ha I, I hate this thing with a deep, undying passion that fuels me. And so I need this as fuel for my journey. I wanted to make a video about this because this concept and this title are so just goddamn ridiculous, but I never found the time, and now the drive to make the video is gone, and... Uh -huh. Forest of Grey City, something I literally hauled last month, but I read it, I enjoyed it, and now I'm totally okay with unhauling it. 
because it's definitely not something that I'm going to go back to with a fondness. It's going to sit around forever and gather dust because I enjoyed it, but not like with my soul or something, you know? Okay, so, um, is my manga collection still frighteningly huge? Yes. Obviously, <laughs> it's still fucking massive. I think it's going to continue to always be just fucking massive. We can't change that. But, but I feel just very impressed with myself because this is the shit. This is the shit we decided we no longer need. This is probably my most impressive unhaul I've ever done. I feel spiritually cleansed. And now we have to finish this video, this little thing. I just want to thank all of these books. Each one of them I enjoyed to some degree, some maybe a little more than others. But they've contributed to my manga experience in some way, form, or fashion. Who are fucking awesome. I don't know if this is too much of a, of a send-off, but fuck it. Thanks. Even you, you gave me, you gave me, gave me standards to live by. You, you, you showed me what, what not to pursue in terms of, in terms of your, some area is bad. You've taught me this lesson. Some area is bad. And yeah, that's that's it. Um, next video is definitely going to be bleh, bleh, definitely going to be my February manga haul. I'm definitely going to try and make a couple more videos in March than I have this month. I've been kind of dead, but I've been like I said, very busy and stuff other than YouTube. And I'm not obviously I'm making no money off of YouTube. YouTube's not my job, so I have no obligation to be like, oh, I gotta make this video now, now, now. But until then, I'll see you sexy mother motherfuckers later.